report this morning on the future of work by Emphasis and the Milken Institute finds that while the pandemic has widened the digital divide and the skills gap, there is a silver lining or two. Let's welcome Emphasis presidential, pre, President Ravi Kumar. Ravi, thanks for being here. What, what are the thank, silver linings? Thank you, Becky, for this opportunity to talk to you, and thank you for that question. Uh, you know, um, the Milken Institute and Emphasis uh, set up a study, and we surveyed around 1,000-plus executives across uh, enterprises, across industries. Uh, I would highlight three or four important things. First of all, the order of work, workplaces, and workforce, which was set up way, way back in the Industrial Revolution, that's going to change permanently. We are going to draw from the past, the physical past, the best things from the physical past. We're going to draw the best things from the current, and we're going to build a hybrid model, a productive, a more productive hybrid model. I already know many of our clients, many of my clients, are talking about how that hybrid model is going to be much more productive than ever before. The second is the work is going to become very modular. It's going to get disconnected from enterprises. Enterprises are going to become platforms. And jobs which form work are going to get disconnected from work. And therefore, you're going to have more democratization of work, which essentially means gig workers are going to come into picture and they're going to actually transition from full-time workers. I actually know of one of our clients, an electronics goods retailer, which actually had 125,000 people, uh, you know, full-time workers before the health crisis. And after the pandemic, they're actually preparing for almost 100,000 full-time workers with 50 to 70,000 gig workers supporting customers who are actually buying on the digital digital platform. Work and education are going to get intertwined, and they're going to get intertwined like never before. You know, we, were, we, are, we are used to the first 30 years of our life educating and the next 50 plus years working and actually drawing from the education we did in the first 30 years. I call it just in case uh, education we're going to go to just-in-time education, which essentially means you're going, to, you're going to educate and work intertwined on a lifelong basis, and we call it lifelong learning. So more, more opportunities for educational institutions and enterprises to partner together in that journey. So these are the top three things I, I'm actually seeing, and uh, these are exciting big switches and provocative, exciting big switches. And that, that's, these are the three hypotheses that we have built from the, from the study which we just institutionalized. If you're talking about new jobs being created that don't require a degree, are these good jobs? How do they pay? Absolutely. You know, with the, with the, with the life of skills getting shrunk, um, the future is going to be about skills and not about degrees. I spoke about lifelong learning. Lifelong learning is also one of the reasons why I would believe that skills is going to be more important than degrees. We're going to build lifelong learners in K-12 schools, and then we are going to learn to learn, learn to unlearn, learn to relearn. That's going to be the future, which essentially means it's going to bridge the divide. Education. Education has actually created a divide in the society because education has been very expensive. Higher, higher secondary education in the United States has gone up by 150% in the last 20 years, while inflation has gone up only by 50%. What that really means that if education could be the divide, it could actually bridge the divide as well. And therefore, I believe that um, moving to, moving to scale, skills versus degrees is going to be a very important, important bridge for, for, for actually uh, reducing the divide which education would have created. COVID-19 is one of the biggest crises of our time. It has impacted every single one of us, shaken our social systems, and disrupted every sector of our economies. The automation of work combined with a global recession led workers to lose their jobs at an accelerated pace compared to previous years. And this trend is expected to continue. 
The ongoing shift in the division of labor between humans, machines, and algorithms might displace 85 million jobs worldwide in the next five years. While 97 million new roles, ones that are more adapted to this new task distribution, may emerge. By 2025, companies expect to displace roughly 6% of their total workforce. One in two workers will need reskilling, and those remaining in their current roles will need to update 40% of their skill set to adapt to the changing labor market. There is a way to collectively benefit from these challenging times. Decades of research have shown that the most valuable asset of any economy or company is its human capital. Around the globe, companies are already experiencing a shortage in relevant skills for future roles and are investing in reskilling and upskilling their workforce. By 2025, organizations say they will train over 70% of their employees to ensure they can smoothly transition into the jobs of tomorrow. These include DevOps engineers, artificial intelligence specialists, digital marketing managers, talent acquisition specialists, and customer success specialists. It will take on average between two weeks and five months for workers to pick up new skills, allowing them to move into these new roles. But data shows they won't need to have the perfect skill set to start transitioning. While two thirds of employers expect to get a return on investment in employees' reskilling programs within just one year, governments will also need to step in to update and fund education and training systems and to ensure displaced workers have adequate safety nets. With purposeful leadership and collaboration, we can turn this global crisis into a unique opportunity to transition into a future of jobs that is inclusive.